Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the complete list of forms you will need for your family petition. Today's video is specifically geared towards inside applicants. First and foremost, you will be submitting form I-130. And that form is called Petition for Alien Relative. That form is used to establish your relationship with the intending immigrant. I do have a separate detailed video on my channel that I will link in the description box of this video where I talk specifically in detail about the form I-130 and all you need to know about it. Next form. If you're petitioning for any kind of relative, Form I-130 will be just enough. However, if you are petitioning for your spouse, you will also need to include Form I-130A together with your I-130 application. Like I mentioned in my I-130 video, you can submit your initial petition online and that is where you will be able to also upload your Form I-130A. If you are sending it all in by mail, you can obviously include Form I-130A right after your form i-130 in your application packet by the way also don't forget to check out a video where i talk about organizing your immigration packet you'll find a lot of useful tips there as well next form you would want to include is form i-485 and that form is also known as adjustment of status application, which is also known as application for a green card. Before I began this process, I had no idea that adjustment of status and green card application were the same thing. But basically, once your petition I-130 is approved, the USCIS officer will move on to review the immigrant's application for green card. And because the intending immigrant is currently inside of the United States, they would be adjusting their status from a non-immigrant to a permanent resident. That is why this form is called adjustment of status. There is additional forms that you will need to submit with your form I-485 and that is form I-864 or I-864EZ, which is the affidavit of support form which is basically a contract between the petitioner and the intending immigrant in which the petitioner agrees to financially support the intending immigrant so that they don't become a public charge. A public charge is somebody who is relying on government assistance and public benefits. The affidavit of support will include the sponsors, the petitioners, financial information and based on the household size of the petitioner and how many immigrants they are sponsoring, they have to meet certain income criteria in order to be able to sponsor the intending immigrant. If you do have questions about affidavit of support, which is one of the most confusing forms in the entire application, I do have a whole separate playlist on my channel all about form I-864. Those videos are extremely detailed. They give a lot of different scenarios. So you will be able to find answers to your affidavit of support questions in that playlist. So the next form that is recommended to be submitted with your adjustment of status application is form I-693, which is also known as medical examination and vaccination record. I also have a separate video on my channel talking specifically about form I-693 this form is optional to be submitted with your adjustment of status application and actually a lot of people suggest that you wait until your green card interview to present your form I-693. Again, if you have any questions about this form, when to submit it, the timelines, what you need for it, etc, etc, check out that video. There are two additional applications that you may choose to submit with your adjustment of status application. And that is forms I-765, which is application for employment authorization, and form I-131, which is also known as application for travel document and also known as advanced parole application. These two forms are completely optional. The purpose of the form I-765 is to allow you to work in the United States while you are waiting for your green card to come in. And the other application for advanced parole, form I-131, is used for you to be able to travel to your home country while your adjustment of status application is 
pending. When you finally receive your green card, you will be able to freely work inside of the United States and also travel for short periods of time. However, before you receive your green card and while your I-485 application is pending and is being reviewed, a long time may go by and you may want to also go home and see your family members or if in case of emergency. So when it comes to these two forms, you can send them in together with your adjustment of status application in the same packet. If you are an adjustment of status applicant, specifically under C9 category and some others, you do not have to pay the filing fees for your I-765 and I-131 as long as you file them with your adjustment of status application or while your adjustment of status application is pending. If you choose not to submit them together at the same time, and your I-485 application is pending and suddenly you need to, for example, go home, go to your home country and for whatever reason, maybe there's an emergency, you can still apply for an advanced parole document. And as long as you send in your I-485 receipt notice with your application, it will still be considered concurrent filing and you won't have to pay the fee. Other additional forms that you may want to include, they're not necessarily applications, but they are forms that a lot of people choose to include. The first one is G1145, and that form is the electronic notification of your application acceptance or receipt notice. So USCIS primarily communicates by mail. However, if you would like to know if your application or petition has been accepted for review, you may also choose to submit forms G1145. You have to include a separate form G1145 for each application that you include in your file. Specifically, if you are sending in, for example, form I-130, I-485, I-765 and I-131, you may want to include four different forms G-1145. And finally, form G-1150 is the authorization for credit card transactions form. If you choose to pay for your applications using a credit or a debit card, you will have to include form G-1450 to pay for the application fees. Again, I want to refer you guys to a video on my channel where I talk about different payment options. So keep in mind that when you are including forms G1450, you will be submitting two separate forms to pay for your I-130 application and I-485 application. Some people may have issues with paying with their card and their application may be rejected and sent back to them. So please make sure that the card you're using does not have a limit on the transaction amount or that it doesn't need a text verification for you to authorize the payment because in those cases, USCIS will not process your payment twice. They will simply reject the application and ask you to resubmit it again with a different payment option. So this is a complete list of forms that you will need for your family-based immigration packet. Please keep in mind that each form obviously needs evidence and supplemental documents that you will have to submit. I hope you found this video useful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It really helps a lot and it also helps other people to see these videos. I wish you luck in your immigration process and I will see you in my next videos. Ciao!